You can't serve in the United States Senate without some level of patience. It takes forever to get things done around here. That is the big things. 15 years ago, I introduced a bill called the DREAM Act. 15 years ago, the year 2000. What were we gonna do with these young people who came to the United States, brought here as babies, infants, toddlers, children? What we were gonna do with them when they'd finished high school and were looking to the future? The DREAM Act said, if they have no serious criminal issues, if they've finished school, we'll give them a chance, a chance to work their way toward legal status and citizenship. I introduced that bill 15 years ago. It's had its ups and downs. At times it's passed in the House. Other times it's passed in the Senate. We've never been able to align those two bodies to pass the bill at the same time. It was June 27th, 2013, almost two and a half years ago, when it last passed in the Senate. It was part of comprehensive immigration reform. 68 senators voted for that bill. 14 Republicans and 54 Democrats. A bipartisan bill, comprehensive immigration reform. We took the bill and sent it to the Republican-controlled House of Representatives. They refused to call the bill or even debate it on the floor of the House of Representatives. It was frustrating. After months, a group of us who'd worked for months to put that bill together, the House would not even consider it, wouldn't even debate it, didn't offer an alternative. They were silent. Virtually all of them were silent, but not every one of them. This was an historic meeting in the city of Chicago. These two gentlemen are my friends. One, my colleague from Illinois, Congressman Luis Gutierrez, and the other, the new Speaker of the House of Representatives, Congressman Paul Ryan from Janesville, Wisconsin. They appeared at a famous setting in Chicago, the City Club, and talked about immigration. Let me read to you what Congressman Paul Ryan said as a visitor joining Congressman Gutierrez in 2013. We all must acknowledge that we have an immigration system that's broken. It is not serving our interests as a nation. Our broken immigration system does not serve our national security interests. Our broken immigration system does not serve our economic security interests. Our broken immigration system does not serve our family interest. Congressman Ryan went on to say, and so when Republicans and Democrats look at this situation and see something that's broken, we need to fix it. We have to offer people a path to earned legalization. We have to invite people to come out of the shadows. That was an extraordinary statement. It was heralded not just in Chicago, but around the country as a statement that a leader would make, trying to lead his party into a positive view toward immigration reform. It was a statement made by Congressman Paul Ryan in the year 2013. I applauded it, praised it, many of us did. But now we have another statement by the new Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan. And he has basically said that the Republicans are going to do nothing, nothing on immigration. He says he can't trust the president. And as long as he can't trust the president, he's going to do nothing as the new Republican leader of the House. So he's gonna consider absolutely no legislation to fix our broken immigration system. Why did President Obama take the actions that he did? creating a program known as the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA. It was the president's response to the failure of Republican leaders in the House to even consider the issue of immigration. And what is DACA? DACA is a program created by executive order that gives to these young people who qualified as dreamers temporary status in the United States so they cannot be deported. They have to come forward, Submit, submit themselves for a criminal background check, pay a fee, and be monitored. If they should get in trouble, commit a crime, they're gone. They're deported. But so far, 700,000 of these young people have come forward as part of the DACA program. The House Republicans have tried to stop the program, eliminate the program. I assume that like some candidates for president, they want to deport all these young people. That's unfortunate. 
because many of these young people who now have at least temporary protection by DACA are doing some absolutely extraordinary things. I'd like to talk about one of them this evening. This young lady's name is Maricela Aguiar. She is from Speaker Ryan's home state of Wisconsin. In 1995, when Maricela was just three years old, her mother brought her to the United States to give her a better life. Maricela's family settled in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She worked hard and excelled in school. During high school, Maricela was on the honor roll, was a member of the National Honor Society, captain of the cross-country team. At the same time, she was active in her community, a volunteer at a homeless shelter. When it came to time to apply for colleges, she wanted to stay close to her family. She wanted to stay in Speaker Ryan's home state of Wisconsin. She applied to a lot of schools. She was offered a full tuition scholarship to Marquette University in Milwaukee. That's an extraordinary school. My son went there, so I'm partial. But it's an extraordinary school because it gave her her chance. Keep in mind, this young lady, because she is undocumented, doesn't qualify for any government assistance, none. And so sacrifices had to be made by her family and others to help her go to Marquette. She went there. She was on the dean's list. Double major, political science, English literature. She worked part-time as a waitress to make ends meet and to pay for her college education expenses. She became involved in advocating for immigration reform. In December 2010, Maricela was here in the Senate gallery along with hundreds of other dreamers when the Senate failed to pass the DREAM Act due to a Republican filibuster. We got a majority of votes, we couldn't get 60. I met Maricela in 2011 when she came to Washington to talk about her concerns, about dreamers just like herself who face deportation. In 2012, Maricela graduated with honors in the top 10% of her graduating class at Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Later that year, President Obama created the Deferred Action Plan that gave her and hundreds of thousands of others a chance to stay here and not be deported. And so she was able to apply and go to graduate school at Brandeis University in Boston. She continues to work on immigration reform as a leader of the Students' Immigration Movement of Massachusetts. She's gonna to return to Milwaukee when she graduates, she promises. She wants to become a public school teacher so she can use her education to help young people in the city where she grew up. She's a loyal Wisconsinite, a loyal member of the Milwaukee community, and I would say to Speaker Ryan, she wants to be part of your state for the rest of her life. Maricela and other dreamers have so much to give America. Can we use more public school teachers with her talent? Of course we can. But Speaker Ryan and other Republican leaders in Congress have made their agenda clear. They want to shut down this program and tell Maricela she can't stay to continue her education. They want to deport her back to a country that she hasn't been to since she was three years old, has no memory of. She would be deported back to Mexico, a place that she may have experienced as a toddler but can't even remember. Will America be a stronger country? Will Wisconsin be a better state? Will Milwaukee be a better city if Maricela is now told to leave after she's obtained her bachelor's degree and is working on a graduate degree? I think the answer is clear. If she stays, we'll all be better for it and she will be better for it. Instead of deporting dreamers like Maricela, Speaker Paul Ryan should support DACA work and work with the Democrats to pass comprehensive immigration reform to fix our broken immigration system.